Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us in this brief devotional. I'm excited to be able to share briefly um, a little insight. Today is Tuesday, obviously, um, and the way that the devotions have been assigned is every day there's a different topic. So today is Team Building Tuesday, and I wanted to take a minute to um, share a story out of the book of Exodus. Uh, but before I do that, um, I want to let you know that my wife and I, along with all, obviously the staff at Regeneration Church, we're praying for you guys. Uh, I know this is a very discouraging time. It's hard. Um, and we don't know what the future holds. And not to be cliche, but we know who holds the future. That uh, is still a quote from Billy Graham. Um, and as we, as we look at this text, um, I wanted to kind of share it in uh, an encouragement team building in the sense of being on the same page and being of, of the same mind and understanding what was taking place at the time uh, of this this particular text uh, I wanted to refrain from going to Timothy or or uh, Titus or any of the pastoral epistles to, to teach from because they're often they're often the the ones that we we lean towards when we go through a devotional on leadership or team building uh, but with the quick word of prayer, I'll pray for um, those that are tuned in, those that will tune in later on, and and uh, just pray for our time in the text. So uh, let's pray really quick. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to spend some time in your word, to spend some time before you, to spend some time not worrying about the problems of the world, but just focusing on your son and uh, just realizing that we have we have a future and a hope and we have it in you. And so speak to us now in this text, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, begins in, in Exodus chapter 15. And uh, let me give you a little background really quick to kind of explain what's going on. The children of Israel just escaped Egypt. They've been delivered by Moses and, and they've wandered through the wilderness up to a certain point. And they're not finished in their journey they're going to continue on uh, they don't know this yet but obviously they just had a, a victorious moment uh, they were delivered from the hands of the Egyptians they witnessed God's hand in delivering them when they crossed over the Red Sea and now they have arrived at this place um, and it's a place of respite it's a, re a place of, of rest for them They've been in bondage, they've been in slavery, they've been um, dictated, and now they're, they're free. So it says in Exodus 15, verse 27, Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they encamped there by the water. So you can tell that this is like an oasis in the desert. It's a, it's a well-watered area, lots of shade. They're not in the, uh, the open desert. And they're here and they're happy they are you got to understand it put yourself in their scenario they just got delivered from this miraculous event um, and and now they're at a place where they are resting and they're being refreshed and they're being provided for and it seems like everything is working out for them this is what God has called us to he's delivered us He's put us in a place where he's providing, and it seems like all is well, but they don't know yet, but they have another journey ahead of them, and it's going to be a difficult one. And, you know, um, F.B. Meyer, I was reading him this morning, and, and uh, he had a really wonderful insight into this, into this text. He said something to the effect, and I'm going to paraphrase it, he said something to the effect of, we never understand the the predicament that we're in until we're out of it meaning God doesn't really allow us in a sense if you think about it this way to learn the lesson while we're in the midst of it it's only after the lesson has occurred that we can look back on it and say oh that's what he was doing or that's what that meant I'll give you an example the cross of Jesus Christ his disciples had walked with him for three years and and they still couldn't get it. We criticized them for being stubborn or hard-headed for not understanding, but it just simply was not permitted at the time until afterwards 
their eyes were open. They understood the, the message of the cross and the lesson that Jesus was trying to teach them all those years. And so the children of Israel, likewise, they're going to go into a lesson. They're not going to understand it and they are going to become bitter as a result of it. And I think for us as, as people, as leaders, as followers, as the body of Christ, uh, to understand that if we go through a lesson, um, if we all have the same mindset and understand that God is the one that is in control, He's the one that's taking care of us, He's the one that is allowing certain things to happen and not happen in our life. And knowing that He is always going to meet us with Himself through every stage of this. Let me read the rest of the text and I'll explain some more. So they are in this desert oasis and it says in chapter 16 verse 1, they set out from Elim. They're leaving. And all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month, after they had departed from the land of Egypt. So, they have been traveling to this new destination for a month. Um, previous text lets us know that they had uh, arrived at this other place on the 15th day of the previous month so we know that they are they are they've been traveling for 30 days and they're tired they're hungry they have probably lost significant amount of weight they are probably for all intents and purposes they're freaking out they are not understanding what is going on I mean are you for real God did you save us and then bring us out here to die did you save us so that we could just ultimately die in embarrassment? Because uh, you couldn't do what we didn't think you could do. And that's unfortunately their, their natural reaction. Our natural tendency is to resort to disbelief. It just simply, that's the way the flesh works. We have to continually feed ourselves with the word of God to, to uh, obtain faith. And so... Uh, it goes on, it says, And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses. It, it doesn't say that a few of them. It doesn't say that 30% of them. It doesn't say even half of them. It says the whole congregation complained. Wow, that's amazing. Um, they grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. They're saying, you know, when, when God did the plagues and he killed off all the Egyptians and all the cattle and all this other stuff, we would have rather die with them than to die out here. Now, I think they're being facetious. I don't know. We could never know until we get to heaven, perhaps. But we do know this. They're complaining and they're comparing. And they're looking at their prior circumstances saying, we had it better. We should have, we should have just died. And it goes on, it says, When we sat by the meat pots and ate the bread to the full, you have brought us into this wilderness to kill us, this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I'm about to rain bread from heaven for you. And people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Um, they've grumbled against the Lord. God hears our grumbling. <laughs> I think sometimes, me personally, I grumble. Um, I grumble at the traffic. I grumble at... Uh, the conditions, no toilet paper. I mean, are you for real? We can't buy toilet paper right now. Um, I, I grumble at the dumbest things. And it's funny because I, I never give it a thought that God is actually listening to my grumbling. I think that I'm doing it in the privacy of my office, which is my truck. But really, he hears. And you know what's so awesome about God in the midst of that is he, he doesn't get upset. He doesn't come down and, and make the tree crash on my car and say, you know, stop grumbling. He patiently and graciously and lovingly hears my grumbling 
He says, you know what, I'm gonna take care of you. And he provides for them. He, he provides manna as you, as you know the story so well. Now, now the difficulty in this passage is, is um, as you may know, they're, they're gonna have a hard time with this, this whole event. And, and part of it is, is trusting the Lord daily. We, we kind of know that story, we know that analogy They've got to trust the Lord daily. They've got to look to Him for daily provision. I mean, there's a lot of lessons to learn in the bread from heaven. Turn to John chapter 6. You can read the story of, of Jesus talking about Himself as the bread that comes from heaven. And so it's a very, very rich and powerful section. But um, I was reading another, another uh, commentator, and he said this. I'm going to just read, I'm gonna read the text and let you, uh, let you hear it for yourself. The test itself required faith for an agricultural people. The people of Israel, they were farmers. They had lived in, in Egypt and they had raised cattle. And so they were, they were raising crops. They were agricultural people. They were field workers of their time. And the farmers goes on to say, know that if one harvest, one harvests only enough food in a day to meet the need of the day, eventually, no one has food because no crops or animals produce food every day. Now they were being asked to restrain their natural tendency. Okay, they're asked, you guys are farmers, you're used to doing a certain thing a certain way. Your natural tendency is going to be to um, gather, anticipate that the crop is not going to be there, and restrain yourselves from your natural tendency to gather as much as was available to gather in anticipation of the time when no gathering would be possible. Let me repeat that one more time. They were being asked to restrain their natural tendency to gather as much as was available to gather in anticipation of the time when no gathering would be possible. When I read that, I was just struck because of what we're going through right now. I go to the grocery store, I literally cannot buy pasta. I mean, there, there's probably, I can't make sopa, I can't make spaghetti, because there's no pasta, it blows me away. Since when did pasta become so popular and coveted? I don't know. Same thing with toilet paper. You know, I, I, we all need toilet paper, but all of a sudden it's all gone. Um, and, and other items, it, it's just crazy. I, I've been looking for just napkins napkins dinner napkins regular square four by four napkins cannot find those for the life of me and it just it's i'm so fascinated and when i read this it just blew me away their tendency their natural tendency the human tendency is to gather as much as possible in anticipation of what we know is coming ahead of us but god was teaching them to trust him every day afresh. You know, part of part of that team, that the team had dissolved in the wilderness because a majority of the team could not see God's daily provision. But a couple could. And praise the Lord for the couple that did because they encouraged the others to trust. And they grumbled and they complained and they finally got it. But it I mean, it took a long time. They wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and eventually that whole bunch died off until the new generation arose who knew not the former days. That's how stubborn the flesh is. That's how stubborn it was for them to let go of those things. So God was teaching them to trust him every day afresh. And they were challenged to think about his provision in a way that had never before been part of their planning hearts. And so they had, they had always done things this way. Now they were being asked to do it a different way. And I think in our time right now, we are, we're asked to do something a different way. And I, and I think there's a world watching. They're wondering, what do we do? And we know what they're doing. They're going the way of the human heart. They're going the way their, their uh, natural tendency is leading them. I think it's a great opportunity for the church to, to come together and to lead by example and show, you know what, we can trust in Christ. We can put our trust in Him. We can look to Him to meet our daily provision. I mean, the road ahead is going to be even harder. It hasn't even hit us yet. And I really think that this is a great opportunity for us. I want to encourage you, if you're having a hard time putting that trust in Him, uh, break away from the news for a day or two. Put a, put a media fast on your, on your digital device 
and, and spend some time in the Word, spend some time with the Lord, and let Him readjust your, your perspective on what's going on today. I pray this, this encourages your heart. Um, again, I'm glad to, to be able to fill in and, and to be part of the body of Christ here at Regeneration Church. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful afternoon.